Welcome, this Digital Dimensions video tech tip will cover SOLIDWORKS display states. What are they? I'm Michael Nolte. A lot of the times you want to make visual changes to your model just to see what it would look like in a different state or a different mode. Well that's what display states is used for. Let's go and start with a uh, part file and kind of look at what display states are and how we can deal with them. They show up on our configuration tab down here at the bottom. So I'll go and right click and I'll go and add another uh, display state just so I can give different levels of control here. So I'll go and create a different uh, display state called metal. So we're going to go and apply a different material and we're going to go into our appearances here and this time we're actually going to apply it at the body level uh, to make the change just to this one uh, section of the model. So I'll go and browse into my task pane, go and grab out a metal, find one I'm looking for, double click on it, make it the active one, but I do want to make sure that it's applying to just the display state that I'm currently on rather than the uh, original display state. So what I'll go and do is change the other body to that same material as well and then we can see that when we go back to our original one we still have our original coloring. So where does this appearance get stored? Let's go and go over to our Display Manager tab and let's go and take a look at the appearances. Uh, they actually show up uh, listed by how they were applied to the particular model, either by a face, by a body, or also even a, by a part. Um, we can also change the uh, sorting here so we can actually just see the hierarchy, which ones are applied to the face, which ones are applied to the body there. Let's go and switch over to another display state. And we'll go and call this one Brass, just so that I've got a, an additional one here. And let's go and apply the material. So I'm just going to switch over to my brass material, drag and drop it over, but I do want to make sure that I'm applying it to the particular level that I want, whether it be face, feature, or body, or even the entire part level. Let's go and drag another one out to this body in the back here, and go and apply that as well to the body level. And let's go and take a look at our Display Manager tab again and see where it actually shows up. See that we do still have an appearance at our face level, so I'm going to go and right click and remove that so I only have it applying to the body. And again, if we go to the other display states, we'll see that we still store the originals. So let's go and switch back up to the assembly and kind of see how we can use display states at the assembly level. So again, I'm going to switch over to the configuration tab and I've set some display states up already. I'm going to use them actually to set up some instructions steps here. So I've got the first part as part of the, uh, the step here and then I'll also go and switch over to the next one and building this up in stages. Uh, so I do need to complete my step 4 and my step 5. Those are still showing the entire assembly. Uh, so I am going to establish those and set those up. So I'll go and switch back to step 4, come back to my uh, assembly tree or my feature tree there so I can actually go through and hide the, uh, the parts that I don't want. I'll go and hide some uh, additional rails here that I don't want visible on this particular stage. Uh, but then let's go and create some uh, uh, changes to it. So rather than uh, having it fully visible, let's go ahead and expand out my display pane, establishing that this part is going to be transparent, but then I also want to change it from a shaded with edges uh, to a um, just a regular shaded mode. So I can have different display styles if I want to, but I do want to go to a shaded mode. And again, going back to my configuration tab, I'll move on to step 5 establishing the setup or the appearance that I want for this particular stage. So I'm using the display states to kind of develop the kind of the flow of how I want this instruction set or these steps of, of building the model. Uh, this time I'll actually go and change one of the parts so that it's transparent uh, just by clicking it visually on the graphics area but then I'll go and change it also to a shaded mode out of the display pane. So I can make changes either on the screen or in the display pane I'm going to bring in one of the other uh, spheres here, or one of the, the balls there for the, the mechanism. But then I'm going to go and change the, the, the color of it, making sure that I'm set to just this display state, uh, because I don't want to be changing it for a different dis uh, display state or a different step. And I'll go and shift it over to a different color here. I'm going to accept out of that, and this establishes now that particular step uh, in my entire process. Besides just creating display states at the assembly level or ones just at the part level, I can reuse my display states that are at the part level and bring them up into the assembly. All I need to do is right click, go into my component properties, and go and switch it over to the other display state that's down at the part level and be able to reuse those in my assembly. 
So let's go and do a quick recap. Display states are for visual changes, where configurations are for physical changes. Display states you have hide show, whereas configurations you have suppress and unsuppress. Thank you for viewing this Digital Dimensions video tech tip. Please visit us at www.ddicad.com.